so welcome everyone to uh, another 100 Days of No Code Demo Day. It's our third one ever, so super excited, of course. Um, firstly, I want to basically just address what no code is. I know obviously you're probably quite aware of what it is, but um, for those that don't know, um, <clears throat> I just want to clue you up on some of the, the key stuff and tell you about how like 100 Days of No Code fits into this. So let me just change slides. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to tackle no code. So there's basically loads of definitions, but essentially the, the, the easiest one is creating software without code or tools that make building websites, apps, and software simple. The bottom line is anyone can now build their ideas because no code has democratized software creation. So just as phones uh, gave rise to citizen journalists, we're now seeing the dawn of citizen developers. So in plain English, what this basically means is that anyone can now create websites, apps, and software, regardless of whether you're technical or non-technical. So at 100 Days of No Code, our mission is to help unleash this first batch or, or generation of citizen developers. And by being a part of this, we can fundamentally change who builds the tech that shapes our everyday lives. So opening up a world with a more diverse set of problem solvers, more inclusive digital spaces, and more accessible careers into tech. So the part we as 100 Days of No Code play in this is being the most accessible community to learn and build with no code. So we do this by being intentionally affordable, inclusive to anyone with a passion for learning and making change, and beginner friendly, so as to not assume any prior knowledge before someone gets started. But how do we actually transform complete beginners into expert no coders? Well, we first give people a simple framework to live by, um, that being 30 minutes of no code learning a day for 100 days, every day compounding on top of the next. Secondly, we connect learners on the same journey together providing accountability and inspiration. And lastly, we are project-led. So we optimize, optimize for creation over consumption. And that is exactly why we host events like this one today, to celebrate all the amazing projects that our community is creating and hopefully show what's possible and be inspired by all the things you can do without code. Okay, so what is gonna be the format for this event? Well. We're gonna kick off by hearing a keynote from Janelle, who has successfully generated more than 30K in sales revenue from e-products entirely built without code, before then kicking off the demos themselves. So after each demo has finished, we're gonna open it up for everyone to um, provide uh, feedback uh, so they can help take these projects to the next level. And for this, we've, um, created a collaborative Jamboard on Google, which you can just add to at any point, and I'll chuck that in the chat in a minute. And of course, you can raise your hand on Zoom and I'll try and get you. And basically, yeah, some Zoom etiquette would be great. It's just make sure you stay on mute when people are presenting. And lastly, we want to give each project as much um, exposure as we can. So I'm hoping we can use the collective network of everyone here today to create some noise for each project um, using, you guessed it, 100 days of no code hashtag and Twitter handle 100 days no code. Um, okay, so I am gonna stop sharing my screen and pass it over to the lovely Janelle to uh, tell us about why no code is like cooking. Thank you. Um, let me see how I share my screen. Cool. Let me know if you can see that. All good. Cool. Um, today I'm going to share with you a little bit about no code um, and how I think it's like cooking. I'm going to share a little bit of my journey and hopefully inspire you um, through this. So, okay. Whoops. First up, congratulations on being here. Um, the fact that you're part of this call is really amazing. And this is really just the first spark in your years long maker journey. I've seen some people that I know on this call. So like, thank you for coming and joining um, all of us here at 100 Days of No Code Demo Day. 
Um, and I also see some new faces. Um, some of you might be pretty new to no code. Some of you might be really experts in no code, but guess what? It doesn't really matter um, if you're one year in, you're one month in, you're one day in, or even like one week in, or maybe you haven't even started, right? Um, this is just a part of your years long maker journey. So today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about no code and why it's like cooking. It's gonna be a really short presentation. Um, and, and later on I'll just um, open it up for uh, questions and answers. So first, why do I think that no code is cooking? Um, I really like food. So I thought it's got probably gonna be more fun uh, to say like no code is like cooking rather than saying like no code changed my life and things like that. So first you start off with zero skills when you're cooking. Um, I'm not a really good cook, so I really identify with that. Um, you can do cooking alone or you can collaborate with others and then you get a lot better with practice. So um, the more you cook, the more you know code, uh, the better you get. And you also experiment a lot. So when you're cooking, um, you can follow a recipe for sure, but every person sort of makes their own tweaks, right? Um, and the same way with no code, you sort of uh, start off and I'll allude more to that in detail in um, the next few slides. And then another thing that's really important is that great chefs build their brands as well as learn from each other. So I think that's really important. So when cooking, you start at zero. And what that really means is that you have no clue what you're doing, right? Um, you might have expertise in different areas of your life, but when you start something new, um, you always start at zero. And that's the case for every one of us, myself included. Um, what I did when I start, started out is I used a lot of templates and I watched how other people um, did no code and like created cool things and also asked a lot of people with experience. So this kind of analogy like really carries over when you're cooking, you really start at zero, you don't know anything, but by following your curiosity and like asking a lot of interesting questions or even following uh, templates and like breaking them apart, you can um, learn how to no code a lot better. And what is my example? So when I first started No Code, I started off um, creating apps. So I created apps using Glide, which essentially is creating a um, PWA app um, and uh, using a Google Sheet. So um, the first one I ever made was Supercharged Toolkit, which was literally a simple collection of my favorite tools. Um, and you can go check it out. It's like super simple. I made it in a half a day. So it really doesn't have to be super impressive. Um, is this something that I would launch on Product Hunt? Maybe not. Um, is this something that I'm excited to tell my friends about? Yes, definitely, because I am a tool geek and I really love sharing about um, my favorite tools with people. Um, so yeah, just do something that's fun for you. You don't have to actually earn money from it. Uh, you can even do um, a fun uh, thing that uh, Ryan Hoover calls dumb apps, right? Uh, yeah, you can just create something that makes you smile or makes a few people smile. And that would be definitely uh, good. So um, start practicing by creating things that make you happy. Um, then next I moved on and I created this like whole Spanish learning resources. So I solved my own problem. I was learning Spanish at that time. I still am. Um, and I found that there were a lot of beginner level resources on the internet, but not a lot of intermediate level resources. And I also wanted to sort of force myself to have all the resources handy in a mobile app. So I just created that um, simply with no code. And the next part about why no code is like cooking is that confidence is built with practice. So you get better at shipping by simply putting in the reps and in the kitchen it's the same. Um, when people progress through like the chef ranks, right? Um, they always start off maybe like washing the dishes and then they get a lot better um, and then they progress up the ranks in the kitchen. Um, and also in your own homes, like your food might taste crappy at first, but then as you keep practicing over the years, you get a lot better. So every time you experiment and tweak something, you learn something new. So yeah, like making small tweaks to your little recipes at home, making small tweaks to the colors um, in your local apps, or even um, thinking of new ways to build automation flows. Um, confidence is really built with practice. And I think there's no two ways about it. I think um, when I started off, like I had a lot of problems. I had a lot of like imposter syndrome. I was like, okay, go back to those apps, right? Those apps are pretty basic, right? Nothing to shout about, nothing to be super proud about. Um, something proud 
something cool for my other friends to look at but like in in terms of like comparing myself to other no coders um maybe not something that i was super excited about but hey what matters is that i made progress and i built my confidence with practice and you'll see that all these things compound over time so the more stuff you ship and the more you make you will see that you learn a lot faster you ship a lot faster and then you get a better and a clearer idea of what works and what doesn't when you ship and yeah so what i wanted to tell you about is that um you can build your confidence with practice and then create a product that really serves your niche um a lot of people have questions about what product they should create and um i would say definitely build something that solves your own problem um the product on the left which is newsletter os is a product that i actually made for myself and i put it in my notion um document and i just like left it there um i solved my own problem but once i've um once i had shipped a lot of pro uh, projects and products i realized that hey um i have this like muscle ready and i shouldn't be afraid of trying to launch it and ship it so there I have it and I have like this new setter OS, which has like um, helped me earn about more than $30,000 already, which is pretty cool. Um, and then from that uh, time um, onwards, I have like partnered up with Josh Kaplan, who used to be in Morning Brew to run, uh, to create this product called Podcast OS. So I think um, definitely if you're thinking of where to start, start somewhere that you're really comfortable with. Um, I was really comfortable with newsletters because um, I wrote one and I talked to a lot of newsletter writers. So if you're an educator, maybe create a product for other teachers. Um, and if you are a project manager, uh, create another uh, product for people who do the same things as you. So yeah, that's really like, um, you build your confidence in your practice and then you um, expand to your niche. And the next point is that great chefs build their brands and learn from each other. When you think about chefs, you think about Gordon Ramsay and you think about um, Jamie Oliver or some other famous chefs. Uh, don't flame me in the comments for mentioning those two chefs. But basically, these guys, they work hard at building their audience and they've always been sharing about what they do publicly. Um, at the same time, they've always been learning. So always having the beginner mindset and having the, I want to be a student. I want to um, make sure that I learn new things and learn new techniques and then also getting tight feedback loops in place. So making sure that whatever you're working on, there is some way and some form that other people can feedback to you whether, yes, um, you're, you're doing well or no. Um, maybe there's something that you might need to rethink. And that really comes uh, from having and building a circle of trusted friends as well as building an audience that can honestly and kindly give you feedback. And by giving you a practical example, um, yeah, you can definitely build an audience and uh, learn along the way. So uh, what I've done is like, I've, uh, since I started no coding, which is sometime last year, so I'm pretty new to no code as well. Um, I started off with um, less than 50 followers. I think uh, when I first talked to KP, I had like 30 something followers. And this is sometime in July uh, 2020 when I had a little bit more followers. Um, and then I've grown to like 6,000 in January and then now I'm like 7,000. So um, how do you really grow on Twitter? And this is something that a lot of people think, hey, um, all these um, guys have big audience, all these girls have big audiences and they, they have like had that for years, but actually that's not true. Um, you can definitely grow on Twitter and grow by giving value and sharing what you've learned, being interesting uh, and interested in others and having great conversations in the DMs. And then the second part is like really like creating a newsletter. Um, and I really like creating newsletter because I thought that it was like a great way to share my thoughts with my friends. It was mainly for myself because I was reading a lot of stuff and I was like pinging my friends random links. But then I realized that having that weekly cadence really helped me to be accountable and helped me to um, sort of be more intentional in my uh, content diet as well. So yeah. By doing these two things, like growing your Twitter, like creating a newsletter or even a blog, you can build your audience and get feedback from them. So always make sure that you keep the DMs open and reply to any emails that you receive. And how do you effectively build in public? I don't really want to take up um, a lot of time. I have a thread on this, but basically you always find ways to lift others up. 
So finding ways to amplify the work of your friends, not always talking about your own stuff, which is actually very boring, like because who always wants to hear about someone who just talks about themselves? Um, be interesting by being interested. So be interested in what other people are doing, amplify them. And you can also be interesting by sharing what you're up to, um, something new you've learned. Um, and I think a, a new tool that really helps you to build in public is this tool called Micro Brave that's created by some of my friends. So definitely let, um, suggest um, that you check that out. Uh, definitely ask curious questions. All of us um, have started at some point in time and we are new. And we were new once. I am still new in a lot of things like bubble and stuff like that. So I have no idea how to do it. So I need to ask a lot of curious questions, but ask in a very thoughtful manner where you respect the other people's time as well as find your tribe. I think if you're on this uh, call, you've probably found your tribe over here or you found your tribe in, in other communities. So definitely find people that you click with and um, make sure that you help them out and you give to them, give tons of value to them before you even ask for anything. And um, I think this is probably one of the last slides. Bring your unique flavor into your creations. No coding is an art, right? Um, just like how cooking is an art. Be like chefs who put their unique touches into their creations. People are known for the interesting things that they do or the unique little twists that they create. Cloning things to learn is okay. Um, and that's what a lot of beginners do. Um, like you clone um, a Twitter or you clone a... Um, a marketplace and things like that. But the real fun is that when you create something new or you remix something in a way that makes people go, wow, um, that's when people actually realize the talent that you have and um, yeah, whatever that you bring to the table. So this is a quote from myself. It's kind of weird to quote, quote myself, but apparently uh, people on Twitter found this very quotable. So uh, remember that all the good ideas in the world aren't taken. If you have the limiting belief that all the useful things in the world are already built, I think it's time to change it for sure. There's plenty of things that people want to use and will pay for if you manage to help them solve a problem. So I think the most important thing is to figure out what pain points are happening in people's lives and how you can help them to solve it. And that's going to be when people are being willing to pay you. So yeah, um, this is just some random stuff about how you can contact me and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave on this uh, quote instead. Um, any questions? Yeah, thanks Janelle, that's awesome. Um, you'd mentioned that you're using your newsletter for some accountability. Have you got any other tools or tips that you do to keep yourself in check with, the, with your progress? Yeah. Um, I am a part of On Deck No Code, so I have a mastermind group, and I think some of them are here. So, hey guys, um, thanks so much for keeping me in track. Um, what I really love uh, to do with my mastermind group is like to run through what uh, we've done last week and the things that we said that we would have done last week as well. So, like every week, we will say uh, what we've done last week and then the things that we want to do this week. So, in um, our mastermind chat, we will definitely like review that and just like lean on each other for support. So I think that's really good to have a support network. I also have a support network um, in terms of my other maker friends that I can literally text them anytime on Telegram or on Slack and just get feedback and or advice on my products and projects. So I think it's really good to build up your own network. So it doesn't need to be a formal thing. It can be totally um, random thing, an informal thing. The thing is, when you keep giving value to other people and when other people keep giving value to you, um, your relationship really solid, solidifies in a really nice way. So um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of ways and mechanisms to keep each other in check. So um, yeah, the most of the structures that I've used are pretty informal though. Perfect. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you. No worries. Awesome. Um... Thanks so much, uh, Janelle. That was that was incredible. Um, as I said, it's slightly made me a bit a bit hungry now. Um, but uh, yeah, um, we still got an hour and a half left, so uh, yeah, can't be can't be worrying worrying about that. But um, I would love to pass on to uh, Mike, who's going to kick us off as the first uh, demoer. So um, without further ado, take it away, uh, Mike. Awesome. Thanks, Max. I'll uh, set up my screen first and. 
start talking. I'll, I'll have a hard time staying in five minutes. Anyone who knows me knows I'll probably have a hard time. So please feel free to cut me off at some other point. Um, I am, uh, my name is Mike and I'm uh, the co-founder of Minimum Studio. We are a, a visual product development studio and I've been um, doing no code for a few years now. And I've actually joined 100 Days of No Code mostly to challenge myself again and get very uncomfortable for a moment uh, and just learn new things, uh, force myself to really do something that um, sparks some passion and instead of doing a client work for a while. So uh, I've been having a really good time and at day 40 something right now, so almost at half of it. And uh, I've been building something that kind of spoils itself by the name, um, but mostly for myself and a group of people to make more music. Um, the problem basically for me personally that I wanted to address is that I run a business uh, as my day job and I also really enjoy making music. And in any logical person's mind, a schedule would look a little bit like this for a week. So, you know, you're doing your work five days a week and then maybe you have an evening or a weekend day where you create some music. Um, but in reality, my schedule mostly looks like that. So I just end up um, working more or, you know, spending my free time running the business or doing other things which is not a bad thing if, you know, the week afterwards you do make some music and you like doing that, but mostly like a random month could look like this with, you know, one day of music making and everything else just doing other stuff and life happens. Um, that's hard for me to accept because my days actually look like this where all of these days I'm thinking, should I be making music or should I be spending more time on that? And that's a lot of energy that just goes to waste and a lot of disappointment for that just one day or one hour of, music making or creative space that I have. So that's not great. A lot of people give up at this point and say, what if I just give up on the whole creative part and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I just have my job and my life and, and that's it. Um, I hope I'd never have to do that. So I always wanted to address that a little bit more. And I started to explore this problem with a few of my friends who I know have you know a busy lives, but also this, this passion for it. And all of them said a similar thing. Like they have weeks on end where they're not making anything and they know, they're constantly know like I should be making more music. Um, and it's just, it's bothering them a lot. So knowing that other people have this problem as well, um, I was looking for what's the solution for that. And you know, the simple or the boring solution for that is you know, have more discipline, just get it done. And I think that's the easiest thing to say. I don't really believe in that one because it's more, I like to treat it as a system instead of um, just as pure willpower. Something else that people would say is, you know, pick one, either do the business or do your busy life or be a creative. And I don't think that fits a lot of people really well. So I, I hope people can carve out time for their creative hobbies some more. So I set out to help people build systems for creating more music in their life. Just like 100 Days of No Code, for example, is a system for people to commit to creating more products in their life. Um, looking at this, I wanted to break it down into basically break my own problem, but also other people's problem down into a few possible problems that I should address. The most, I think the most obvious one is uh, lack of habit and routine. It's not a, if you know, you only drop this if you're not unconsciously doing it every week or if you don't have a set moment uh, where you're always making music and it's just not in your routine yet. Something else that every creator knows is getting into a creative state is just can be really difficult. Uh, having a blank canvas can be really uh, impressive and, and you can just block for a moment. So that means you won't make anything. It's also hard to be inspired at the right time. Um, you could go to the grocery store, have a great idea, but then go home, sit, sit by your desk and then have no ideas at all. Um, so it's hard to kind of find that inspiration if you have only half an hour or an hour or an evening. Another thing is unrealistic expectations. In most communities, people publish their best work and uh, their most polished work and great things. And if you just do this as a hobby, you're comparing to the wrong people, you, you just get demotivated and you probably quit. I thought of a community to as like as the first iteration of this. I thought I thought maybe um, it should be a group of people because then we can keep each other accountable, and that will be a solution for the lack of habit and routine. So basically, basically uh, rewarding people for having streaks for uploading something every week would be cool. So you can stay consistent and make sure that you're keep you you keep spending time on it. Uh, staying accountable to other people would probably help. These are all hypotheses at the time. Um, getting into a creative state, I thought a nice thing I could do is gather a whole bunch of musical exercises and basically make those accessible to the community whenever they get stuck. And something else to tackle the inspiration part is splitting up the moment where you're thinking of what to make 
from the moment where you're actually making. So setting intentions at the beginning of the week, like I, li I would like to experiment with X or Y. And then later on, when you sit down, you actually have a few subjects to play with instead of having inspiration strike at the right time. Unrealistic expectations, I try to tackle by focusing the whole community on works in progress. So by not forcing people to um, show polished work or be good at what they do, by just forcing them to upload something. It can be shit, really. It can be not interesting. It can be a rough draft. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's all about being vulnerable and being open. My first version was not as flashy at all. It was a Telegram group uh, because it was something I could set up in five to 10 minutes. And my biggest, uh, the biggest thing I wanted to kind of validate here or kind of check was the rhythm. And I just wanted to check how stressful is it if I force people to do this every week? Does it kind of have a negative effect at all if it's just something you have to do for this group instead of something you want to do? So the idea was every Monday, I would just manually text people and tell them, hey, what do you want to play with or work on or experiment with this week? And I would publish that to the group and say, these people are going to play with these things and you know people could help out. During the week, people would upload their work in progresses and uh, of course, hype each other up or get some feedback or just in general, um, count towards the streak. And at the end of the week, people's streaks are counted up and then presented back to the group and you can motivate each other to keep going. Super simple and all I needed was Telegram to do it. And of course, I also needed to check whether other people like this across from my own friend group. So I made a landing page in Notion and the tool called Super, uh, which also was the most efficient way to do it at the time. And it just said three things about how it works, stay accountable, get over writer's block and develop a routine. I started sharing this with some people online, started talking about writer's block with some people and got some good responses. And the group itself was actually really cool as well. Um, everyone who was in the group who actually participated from the get-go, um, said it was quite effective. Everyone was actually making more music uh, as compared to what they did before, including myself. So that was kind of validated. Um, it was an interesting effect where once you see other people uploading works in progress, you actually get motivated to do more as well. So you get more reminders of uh, creating, which was cool. And everyone I reached out to was quite positive and said, okay, this idea is great. You should definitely do this. But asking them to join the community is a pretty big ask. So just cold messaging someone and saying, hey, I have this thing, you have to commit to all kinds of things, you have to do this every week, um, is not as uh, attractive to do to pick up right away. Another thing that happens if we had people from very varying skill levels in the group, which was an interesting effect because uh, of course they wouldn't get as much out of it as people who are nicely matched in terms of skill level. So the feedback isn't as valuable for people who are of a higher skill level. And everyone who was in the group and happy with it was something I, someone I knew personally, um, which definitely has an impact. So I iterated towards the current version and I try, I'm trying to move kind of away from the idea of calling it a community and um, working more on something like a collaborative habit tracker, which you can use with a group of people that you already know and set up and more of a system that facilitates you uh, instead of me facilitating everything and it being about me as a community guy. Uh, it's also more single player. So you can build up a, uh, a little diary of things that you've uploaded over time to inspire you by your own past work. Um, you can create your own groups or join one, or I can find one for people. And I've actually taken all the exercises I gathered and made a different product out of it. So I can share that with people and market that instead of the more a higher threshold, big community ask. So I'm just going to show that to you guys. And it's actually become a few mini products or a few mini things I made that are interconnected. Um, the main page is on Webflow. And this is actually going to be, I, I realized I'm probably going to do a lot of experiments under the same mission. So the Webflow page is really there to be an exhibition of the different tools. So there's the exercises, which I'll show in a minute. And there's the mobile app. This could be growing with all kinds of different solutions. The exercises were built in software. It's a really, really simple uh, tool where you can just build something and put it on top of Airtable. Um, it's it's work in progress still, but I think it's enough to just share the concept with people and show that I'm gathering all these exercises, uh, which is a lot of fun to do. So this is kind of separate at the moment. And when, then we have the more core of it, which is the Adalo app. And the Adalo app, I can just walk through for a moment. It's also like everything here, quite simple. Um, you basically sign up 
you get the rules uh, of engagement, you get the ideas of about how the platform works. So there's just basically the same thing that I put on the initial Notion page, uh, but worked into a mobile app. So you go in, you get through the onboarding, you set a goal uh, just to make it tangible for yourself. Uh, we didn't have this before, but it might be really interesting to have something that you work towards, which then um, tells you about groups. And this is something I'm still working on. So we're working in progress, but there's one group at the moment, which is our original group, but this will be the place where people decide, am I going to join an existing group or find random people or uh, invite my friends? So in this case, you can join the OG Make More Music, which is us. And then every Monday, this is the screen that everyone sees. So it's about you know, defining your experiments. And unless you do this, you cannot really move on into, in, into the app. So here I would say, I want to experiment with presenting on Zoom to make it a bit relevant. So once I do that, I get in and uh, my homepage is always this IDs. So whenever I'm sitting down to make music, I can grab the app and I see, oh, I've already have a few starting points that I defined for myself. In the future, I'll, you'll be able to grab the exercises that I just showed and just import them here or use one of those. I can log a session, which I'll skip over now to not ruin the data a little bit, uh, but you can upload audio, uh, video or picture uh, about your session. And you can define whether you want to share it with the group or keep it for yourself. So you can still build up your streak and not share a lot if it feels too scary for people. There's a, um, a feed that is actually the most exciting part, I think. Uh, for me, this is very inspiring because uh, the whole group is just uploading things in here. And it can be audio, obviously, uh, but it can also be video, for example. And all it really does is you can clap for each other. You can see each other's streak. And uh, it's just a fully positive vibe. So just everything that comes in, everyone's like very hyped about it. Uh, we kind of missed the chat group at first. So every everything that's uploaded goes into the Telegram group. And it basically tells everyone someone just did something and then we can all talk about it within the group. So it's a kind of a hacky way to have a chat feature without having to build it. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. Then of course, there's the diary, which is just all the cool things I've made and done so far, which for this account is of course none. Um, which is more of a personal thing. So I can really see my progress over time and see what I've been making every week. That's the app for now. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the tech stack uh, because it's quite extensive for this project. Uh, like I said, I wanted to do something new in these hundred days and, and, and try something out. Um, I design everything in Figma. And I, I personally always uh, recommend that to any no coder uh, to take a step and to think about design beforehand. And it's more just because I think it's kind of a different task then going straight into the build. The landing page that I just showed you guys is built in Webflow. And you know, if imagine there's a blog or something in the future that will be there as well, because it's the best tool for that. The backend for the mobile app is built in Bubble and the mobile app itself is built in Adalo. And that might seem a little strange. Um, the biggest reason for that is that there's a lot of features in Bubble that Adalo will not have in the near future. And Adalo is a lot better at handling mobile apps and app stores. So it's kind of a way for me to use the best of both worlds and not be limited by any, any of these tools. The directory is uh, built in software and Airtable, like I said, because it was just such a crazy fast way to, to get it up instead of doing that in something like Webflow. Now, the thing I wanted to talk about here in relationship to Figma is that you see everything looks quite consistent, even though there's they are different platforms. And I think there's only one way to really be able to do that. And that is if you design beforehand and think about design before starting your, your project. Um, the great thing is all of these tools, they have Google fonts installed. So if you use a, a Google font that you really like and you have a pretty clean or simple style like I do, you can actually get away with this and use any platform and you won't be limited by um, either your skill set in one platform or you won't be limited by um, the directions you can go in in the future. So the cool thing about this setup is I could build a ton of features that go all over the place without hurting my stack or without having to transition to something new. So that was a successful experiment. It was very frustrating, but it was a, a lot of fun to do. And uh, that's really it about the product right now. Something I really need to work on that I haven't worked on enough is uh, some, some kind of acquisition strategy, um, finding a way to, to make people aware that this exists and, and find my way into the right communities. I'm thinking of using this stack to build a lot of these mini tools and, and small products um, maybe make the product more viral or shareable, 
and uh, possibly do like more research on songwriting or content that could be uh, the top of the funnel for this. I also, of course, want to tweak the habit tracker based on everything that everyone is experiencing right now. And the future is like, this is a fully kind of experimental exercise. So the future is very much open for interpretation. This could either spin off into a community that I would love to do, or it could be a, a product related to music making where this is kind of the, the testing audience for. Um, all very exciting. I uh, hope at the, at the end of the 100 days, it's all uh, a bit more developed, but uh, this is where it is right now. And uh, that's it for now. So if anyone has any questions on how I build it or uh, where it's going, you can just reach out at Mike at Minimum Studio. Oh, thanks so much, Mike. Um, yeah, he's he's going he's gunning for top of the spot there. Um, that was that was epic. Um, thanks so much. Um, we we we've got some some feedback for you um, on the Jamboard, so please yeah check that out um, when you can. But um, yeah, just due to like. Um, time let's uh let's sort of keep the, the show on the road um so i'd love to pass over to yolanda um to uh to share us uh share with us um the project she's been working on so yeah feel free to to share away okay um hi everybody i'm so glad max put me behind mike no pressure <laughs> that was a great presentation mike okay i'm gonna share my screen now okay this okay again my name is Yolanda Stevens I'm fresh vester on Twitter and my project is women to done and let me try and get rid of this actually okay just see max space <laughs> so my project is women to done but let me just give um, a little background I am on day 94 and I found myself going through a few different phases during the course of the last 94 days. Um, the first being wanna be app developer and then using no code tools for existing operations and then as a content creator. And I think these three phases kind of nicely sum up like the type of no coder you are. I think you're either one of these or you're all of these. So my journey started off uh, in a bubble boot camp. So I'm brand new uh, to no code, and for some odd reason, <laughs> chose the big daddy of all no code tools um, at the very onset of my hundred days. So for the first eight weeks or so, I was strictly doing bubble. And then once I left the boot camp, I started exploring different no code tools. Um, and another thing that I found is that if you don't have a specific project going into this challenge, you can literally use the 100 days just to explore all of the no code tools because there's so many out there. So these are just a few that um, I kind of played with uh, during, during my time. Um, of course, Bubble, Card, Typeform, uh, Typeform, Airtable, Zapier, I did Twilio, Glide, Softer, Stripe, um, and uh, Notion. Uh, so those are my primary. And right now, probably for the past few weeks, it's been solely um, Airtable, Softer, and Notion. So what I found after I got out of the bubble boot camp, I started thinking, okay, I haven't launched anything. <laughs> what, what am I going to do for the rest of my time? And what I found is I wanted to use no, my no code tools for my existing passions. So by day, I'm a scrum master for three agile development teams and wanted to take that knowledge and that those lessons offline into basically a, a side hustle to help women founders. So I combined my skills as a scrum master, women founders, agile frameworks, which is of course um, a part of scrum. Scrum is a agile framework and no cold tools and started uh, women to done, which basically helps women founders overcome operational barriers within a sprint, it's within a three week sprint using no code tools. 
And my toolkit for women to done is softer, Airtable, Stripe, and of course, Notion. So actually I'm gonna get out of this and walk through the site. Okay, so this is womentodone.org. It's in softer and basically this is the landing page where I lay out the value proposition. So we have who it's for, primarily women, for in socially, um, running socially conscious businesses. Um, the program runs 21 days, that's three weeks and is the length of a normal sprint. And within the sprint, we have three phases, planning, execution, and inspection. And basically we solely focus on the pain points that the woman has in her business currently. Um, some uh, features of the program are one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, um, frequent feedback from me, as well as the other members of the cohort. And also, uh, of course, no code tool recommendations. Um, these are a few of the ladies that I have worked with um, since launching on Jan 1. Um, one is very familiar. One is actually on 100 Days uh, Banner, <laughs> a fellow no-coder, Serena. Um, and so basically this is the landing page. So what you'll see is that there's no sign up here. Um, if a woman founder is interested, they would go to apply where they would fill out a registration form. So this is a little bit different than the use cases I've seen for softer's uh, use, uh, user accounts. Normally, I think uh, the user accounts are being used to access maybe courses, um, purchase material. Um, but because the coaching is such a high, high touch endeavor, um, I need to be able to vet out the members beforehand. So rather than a, just simply allowing them to sign up, I ask them to apply, um, fill out this form, and then I receive the information through Airtable. I assess it, and then I send them a link to actually sign up. Um, so they can go in, sign in, or whatever. However, they can always access um, the free resources here. And basically there are some uh, no code low code resources that they can access. And this is still kind of being built out. Um, so once they, and then this is also an example of, uh, this is a direct pull from this page. Um, so once they are actually able to sign in, they can access um, the sprint module that they have signed up for. And just to kind of, um, if I can, lose this. So Max, I'm going to ask, okay, it's just going to go away. Cool beans. Okay. So once they hit the, the sprint module after they've signed up, they're presented with, of course, um, the pricing for the program. Right now it's 149 for solo founders and 399 for founder and team. And again, I've been doing this for the last two months since Jan 1, working with different founders and all of that's been of course, at no cost, but going forward, um, there will be. So just to kind of show you a little bit about the, uh, a little of the inside of Softer, this is the same page. And once they have submitted payment, it actually goes to um, the Sprint Details page, which presents them with a link to join the Slack group, download the Notion template, and schedule their sessions with me. And another tool that I've used in addition to Softer is Notion for the template that we use. And here is that template. Um, so basically it starts off with a dashboard. It has a lot of placeholder, um, pages here that the founder can fill out based on their company information. Um, but ultimately the core of the template is in the project management uh, pages. And I walk through basically um, each day what the founder should be doing on their 21 day journey. So let's go back. So next step, I do wanna build out some uh, growth tools. Um, I, I do wanna add a freelancer 
um, job boards, particularly for women no coders on the site. Um, so to kind of link up the founders that are coming on with women already in the space. Um, I'd like to do or start a newsletter eventually, probably using Notion and develop some self-paced and cohort-based courses. So I only have two ask, of course, and everyone knows like the first ask, which is uh, if you know a founder, refer a founder to womentodone.org. And then lastly, please follow us on social media. We just started, of course, on Jan 1. Um, so we're a little lacking in our followers, but would, would love for you guys to join um, our journey. And that is all. Thank you so much. Well. Wow um thanks thank you uh yolanda that was that was brilliant i really love your use of um kind of notion as the back end and, and softer as a front end um yeah love it um again yeah just to, to to time reasons i know we've got some some really good projects um to come so um feedback is on the jamboard so please uh, take a look at that uh yolanda but um really excited for the next project from james burgess um who is doing stuff around voice apps. Um, so quite a niche in the, the no-code space at the moment, but hopefully it won't be soon uh, after people see James's uh, presentation. Let me, let me unmute myself, that would help. <laughs> hey everybody, good to be here. And uh, after Mike and Yolanda, I'm gonna lower the bar for our presentation designs. Great job, everybody. Um, so my name is James Burgess. I'm a speech language pathologist by day, and I got into no code about a month ago, and I built a software site, but this is really my first uh, project besides that. So I'm excited to show you. Let me go. So my thing is called Smooth Speaking, and it's an intro course and survey to help people who stutter learn about the causes and myths around stuttering. And if you don't know, uh, sorry, is the, I don't know if this is in the way, but if you don't know about voice apps, uh, I didn't know about it about a week ago. So the way I figured out about it was from Doc posted a challenge, shout out to Doc, um, called Doc vs. the World. And it was hosted by True Reply as a 72 hour no code hackathon to build a voice app. And what a voice app is, is Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. Uh, you know, you say, hey, Alexa, and you can launch an app uh, and have that whole voice experience play through your house. I'm not sure if you can connect it through your headphones, but I took, I took this as an opportunity to just learn more about no code and voice apps. So I thought, what can I do that will help students with disabilities or help other speech therapists who are really busy with paperwork? Um, you know, you think about voice, it's cool because it's just another way to access information. So if you have trouble with reading, you can find information by using your voice. Um, I had a, a million ideas, but it was above my pay grade in the beginning because I'm so new to no code. So I wanted to keep it simple. And so what I ended up with is smooth speaking. And the problem it solves is that there are many myths about stuttering and there's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, if, if you look for causes and cures for stuttering, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen. So I wanted to use it sort of as a content marketing piece on the front end of this private practice that I hope to build. That, that's also my side hustle. So building a private practice. Uh, so I have James Earl Jones here because he's an example of a person who stutters. There's many famous people who stutter, including Joe Biden and Amanda Gorman. And so a lot of things that people don't talk about also in the stuttering world is the tip of the iceberg is just the physical things you see, like the actual stutter itself, the movements. But what you don't hear about is below the surface, the emotional impact it has. So I also wanted to address that. So to quickly how it works, um, that I'll give you an overview and then I'll show you more about it. But when you go to my website, which I'll show you in a second, yeah, you opt in and then it gives you instructions for the voice app. Then you launch it by opening your Alexa or Google Assistant. I don't have either of those. I'm gonna show just one thing of it on my phone with the Alexa app, or you can do it on iPad. 
but you'll hear my voice come out and it, it's this whole welcome experience, almost like an audio book. So I'll have a welcome message, tell you how to navigate the voice experience. Then you can go to education modules, so almost like a little mini course about stuttering myths and why treatment fails. And after that, this is where True Reply is really cool, is you have two module, or uh, you have surveys that are interactive. So you can actually interact. It's not just a one-way like podcast, you're actually recording the responses of the people that you're interact, your customer or your patient, whoever you're trying to engage with. So I put a survey together with my own voice to personalize it. And I think that's important for speech therapy because it's a very personal high touch field, if you will. So um, I asked them how they feel about different attitudes towards their stutter. And I record those those uh, responses and it zaps over to a Google Sheet so I can record them and follow up later. So just the tool path here. Uh, my website's on WordPress. I used an Elementor page builder. Haven't gone on the web flow yet. We'll get there. And then they opt in to a landing page, which sends them an email with instructions on how to use the voice app, which really you could use it without opting into my email, but that's, I'll figure that out later. And then it zaps their responses to Google Sheets. Okay, so this is just what my main private practice website looks like. These are the services here. If you click learn more on stuttering therapy, it takes you to the landing page, which has your get your free audio experience, intro to stuttering mindset mastery. They enter their email and then you get this automated message, stuttering starts below the surface. And this kind of gives you the background and the instructions for how to use the app. Um, so I don't want to, I know I want to be mindful of time, so I won't demo the whole entire app, but I will just show you sort of the welcome message. So I have my Alexa app open. Oh, she's responding to me. Launch smooth speaking. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Welcome to Intro to Mindset Mastery from Smooth Speaking. Ready to get started? Yes. I will now explain how to navigate around the app. Please reply with an answer after I finish speaking. To hear what most stuttering therapy gets wrong, say hidden. To hear about the top myths about stuttering, say myths. To skip straight to the quiz, say quiz. And you can only say repeat to have any section repeated. Where would you like to go? Quiz. Now that we've gone over the factors that cause and aggravate stuttering, you're ready to do some self-reflection and take stock of your own attitudes toward your stutter. Question for you. On a scale of one to five, with one being completely disagree and five being completely agree, say the number that represents your answer. I feel like my stutter holds me back in life, either socially or with the relationships or in my career. Answer now. Five. So I won't go through the whole thing, but at the end there, it records the responses. And then I have a thank you message with basically a call to action to uh, stay on my email list, opt in if you haven't already, and follow up about group coaching sessions or just other ways I can help them with tips and resources. So that's like the MVP version of it. And my next steps, I want to expand it out to have more conditional logic. So based on their responses, send them almost like a BuzzFeed style quiz, maybe like based on if they say four or one, how, how severe they they feel about their stuttering, send them to different res resources, and then possibly even expand the app out to other services that I could provide like accent modification or social, social uh, skills for people with autism and things like that. Um, so I'm pretty fresh to no code. I could use any help from anybody. Uh, and my landing page, 
was whipped up together. I know the design, I need, that's something I want to keep working on. But in general, if anyone knows how to link, um, link the voice app directly to the email opt-in, I have it as like two separate things. It's, uh, I don't know how to make it so the Google Sheet puts their name right onto the Google Sheet without, even, even after they opt into the email, I'm not sure how to connect that. Um, and then just conditional logic so that it sends them a different result based on what they say into the voice app. And then future ideas, I have a bunch of them. Doc will tell you it's called Doc versus the world, but it's more like Doc helps the world because he helps me out a lot. So thank you, Doc. And we're going to try some more complicated voice apps that might require APIs, like helping people translate things automatically or helping students check their homework on Google Classroom by using their voice if they can't read and then maybe helping other businesses build voice apps. I got two years of a free agency package of True Reply. So if anyone has any ideas, please reach out and I'd be happy to collaborate. And I'm really grateful to be here. So thank you, Max. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if there's any words that, um, yeah, I will do that justice. That was, that was amazing. Um, yeah mind blown um i'm not going to say anything because i yeah can't do anything to to do that justice but um uh, yeah thanks so much james for for showing that off um i hope everyone now sort of goes and, and plays with voice because you you you've seen how powerful it is um but uh yeah let's um let's move on as a, as i said before feedback is on uh jamboard so so please check it out um and and, and everyone please just add to that along the way um Next up, we have Marcus. Um, and I saw his idea right at the um, beginning, um, so it's really nice now to see it like develop. Um, so yeah, I'd love to um, to see it now. And uh, yeah, uh, Marcus, please please share it with us. Thank you very much. Just gonna get myself set up here. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. We can't quite see you, but no, no, you're good. You're good. Can you not see me? Sorry, that was a really bad joke. It was just because you're a dark background. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So hi, everyone. I'm Marcus. I've been in uh, product and company building for quite a long time, about 17 years now, but I'm brand new to no code. been doing that for a few months. And this is my first real project in uh, Bubble. That I'm doing together with the Yelmer, who I co-founded Venturism with. Uh, so I'm just going to get stuck in, shall I? So very excited to show you sneak peek today. Um, a little bit of background here. First, I just want to say welcome to the greatest time in history for starting a company. I mean, we've had some pretty good startup vintages in the past, like the dot-com days, the mobile boom, but that's nothing compared to what no code will enable going forward. And we'll see this explosion of millions and maybe billions of creators and makers creating innovations and products for the world. But there is a issue, something we don't like to talk about that much. And that's that 90% of all products fail, if not more. And it's not really to do with how well they're built. The majority fail because they are the wrong idea to start with, meaning we're not hitting on a strong enough need in, in the market with our product. So the million dollar question then is, how do you know which ideas to build? And there is a way. Um, and our man, JMJ says this pretty well, if you can convert users to paying for something that is not um, fully ready, that's the ultimate sign of respect that you're solving a real problem. Um, so, and we use this quite a lot. And the way, it, the way it normally goes is like this. Uh, you buy a cool domain, you do some good design in Figma or something like that to create something unique that really gets the attention of your audience. Uh, maybe you build your web page in Notion with Super, uh, use MailChimp or something like that for communication and mailing lists and things like that, and maybe Gumroad for payments. And if you're a bit like me, who maybe have a new idea every week or at least every month or two months, this is quite a cumbersome process to go through each time. 
So we want, we kind of scratched our own itch here, like Janelle was talking about before, and created sneak peek, where you can do all of these things in uh, one product at a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time. So this is what I want to show you today. So this is sneak peek. This is our profile page. Here you can see some products we're working on at the moment. And you can see here that you have your, your email signups to the interest list and the pre-orders made for your different products. So depending on the goals you have, you can start to validate to see if it's hitting on a need strong enough. But what I want to show you today is how you create the project from scratch. And how it works in sneak peek is that you get served up with a template project like this. So you have something to start with. Then you can go in and edit that to your liking. And Max Haining, as I know you're working on a new course for no code beginners. I'm going to use that for demo purposes here. So let's just put some, okay, so what is this course about? Cool. In a tagline here, get going with no code. And then you can start. So this is a bit like Lego. You can just turn things on and off and add stuff as you go. And you can start putting in some benefits for your product, what you're trying to sell, etc. Let's try that out. So then you can see that you're starting to have some copies, some value proposition, and some benefits and stuff for your product. But then maybe the delighter of this product is, let's now customize this look and feel so it represents the product that I'm trying to communicate here and sell here. So let's pick something like a Lego. It's good for no code, good metaphor, putting that first brick down, a beginner. And what you can see here is that it picks out the color palette from this image. I'm gonna turn these off. And then uses those colors automatically, quite elegantly, to style up your product page. And then you can go in and tweak that and sort of cycling through the colors from your header image there until you're happy with something. And you can do the gradient in the background and you can do your call to action button. Cool. Quite happy with that. Or maybe, Max, I know what you're thinking. That doesn't really represent me. I would like something a bit more dynamic to represent me as a course leader a bit better. Yeah, that's good. Let's pick that. And again, it picks out the colors from the header and you can go through and tweak this in a very simple way until you're happy with the page. Nice. Maybe we also need a bit of an intro video explaining this product. So I'm going to grab the embed code from your YouTube video, Max, put it in here. And hi, Max. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the No Code course for beginners. Cool. So this is starting to look like something. And then, of course, the most important part really is, you know, to validate your idea through signups on the waiting list and pre-orders. And you can go down here and switch. Let's switch from waiting list to pre-orders. Pre-order now. Just save it like that for now. And then you're actually set up. So if I put my name in here and email, and I will actually go in, here's the Stripe checkout for Max's course and get that purchase through. And then you will see that in your dashboard. And as I said, depending on your goals, you can evaluate how successful it is. And you can go in and share this and shout about it to the world. So that's the demo. Um, so what sneak peek is to sum up it's a new way to avoid launching ideas nobody wants. 
Now you can shape your ideas in minutes and you use those building blocks, so it's really easy. You can share your ideas and you don't need to worry about the design, it's kind of done for you. And you can sell before you build, so you can take those pre-orders and sign ups to really see if you're building something of real value. Uh, and we have it out now for a few uh, beta users. And I think one of my favorite pieces of feedback so far is you can build the whole thing on your phone, perfect for people who like to ship ideas from the bathroom. So if you're one of those people, you know where to go. And what's special about today? Well, we're going to open this up now at the end of today for everyone who's on the waiting list. There's about 200 people on the waiting list now. So you will be invited and get to play around with this yourself, your product. And finally, I just want to say I'm not doing this on my own. It's a really close collaboration with Yelmer. You can see our details here. You can go to Venturism, read more about us. Go to our handles on Twitter. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Marcus. Yeah, again, smashing it. Um, loved it. Um, thank you for embarrassing me by uh, showing that awful uh, video uh, promo clip of me. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, love to now pass on to Ventsy um, as our fifth uh, demoer. Um, yeah, she's got a really cool project in the works. Uh, so. I shall say no more and let her talk about it herself. Um, but yeah, all yours, Fancy. Hi, can you hear me? All good. Perfect. Awesome. Hi to all my fellow no coders and no code fellows. So let me first introduce you to Snowy. This is the background that I need to give before I can demo my project. So in 2019, she had a blood parasite that required her to undergo three urgent blood transfusions. And since the situation was so bad, we also had to give her steroids to give her body a boost. And while that worked, unfortunately, the steroids also pushed her into diabetes. One of the symptoms about, of, of diabetes is that just like in humans, uh, you get excessively hungry, but you also lose weight rapidly. Over just three weeks, she lost about 35% of her body weight and became so weak that I thought that I was going to lose her. You see, the thing about diabetic pets is that they require a completely new lifestyle change for the owner. Pet diabetes is very much manageable, but you need to learn what to do and how to do it. The first thing you need to learn is drawing blood from your dog's ear and checking for the blood glucose levels twice a day. You also need to maintain this blood glucose count under a certain level in order to maintain your pet's health. The second thing you need to learn is to administer insulin injections to your pet twice a day. Since Snowy was diagnosed with diabetes, my life has been anchored by the two insulin shots that I give to her every single day. Now, the point of my project for 100 Days of No Code is to show that pet diabetes can be managed well and that you can give your pet a completely normal and great quality of life. And I want to show you proof of this. This is Snowy right after her diagnosis. She's all bones and she used to struggle to walk because she was so weak. I started learning to take care of her and change my lifestyle to make sure that she got her medicines, the right food and exercise on time each single day. I never lost hope in her recovery and believe that with love and care, she would begin to heal and become active again. And I was right. Over the next few months, she slowly started gaining weight and became more active and started playing again. Today, she's healthy again, and she loves playing with Bubbles, my pregnant cat. And both Snowy and I are now used to the new lifestyle that requires us to wake up early, test blood, eat a completely different kind of diet, and two insulin shots each single day. A year of this later, she's now doing great. Her weight is actually better than her normal levels. Her recent blood test came out normal again, and she's active and playful. So I promise you that pet diabetes can be managed. But how do you take care of a diabetic pet? It's sort of a full-time job, really. Here's what you need to do without fail. You need to check uh, their blood glucose levels twice a day. You need to administer insulin injections twice a day. You need to feed only diabetic food and nothing else. You've got to make sure that they get enough exercise. And apart from all of this, you need to go to the wet once in three months or once in four months maximum, uh, minimum, uh, and make sure that the overall health, like kidney function and liver function are doing okay. The thing is that, it is actually easy once you learn it, honestly, but it's not easy to learn it. And this is what I want to change with my app. 
Here's doggy diabetes, an app to make it easy to care for your diabetic pet. Let me show you how it works. So when you first sign in, it asks you to enter your pet's details. So let's do that quickly. Her name, the breed, the date of birth, et cetera. And when you save it, now your pet's profile on the app is ready. So let's explore the sections of this app. First, every owner of a diabetic pet needs to follow a, strictly, a strict daily schedule every single day. The key to managing diabetes, just as in humans, is that the same amount of uh, and same amount and type of food, same amount and type of exercise, same amount of insulin at the same time every single day without fail. And here's how that daily schedule of tasks might look. And you can add any new tasks and delete it as you wish. Next, we also need to monitor and keep a record of all the medicines that we're gonna give her along with the dosage and frequency of the medicines. We have the data here and you can always make edits to this as the prescription changes. The other thing is we also need to plan visits to the wet, health tests, activities, and so on. And there's a schedule planner tab to keep a track of all of this along with the handy to-do list. But the most important component of this app is the insulin log. To manage diabetes, you need to have a clear picture of the blood glucose levels. The monthly average of this blood glucose needs to be under 200. And in this section of the app, you can enter the glucose values twice a day with the date and time, and it gets logged into this interactive chart. For instance, let's say it's at 7 p.m., 7.30. So the graph changes, the chart is interactive and it changes in real time. And you can simply show this data to your vet at the next visit so they can see how the diabetes is being managed. Finally, if you have to make any changes to any of the data, you can go to the settings page and save the edits quickly. So this is what I've built for my MVP. These are actually the features that I need as a pet owner and it works perfectly for me. And these are the updates that are coming. Uh, essentially, the next this is built on Bubble completely, but in the next version, I'm doing it in Adalo just because the design and, and the whole look and feel of it is much better. And of course, it's also easier to deploy uh, for download on the App Store. I'm also adding a reminders feature to remind users about their schedule and tasks. And finally, I'm also adding videos like tips on how to take care of your pet better. Thank you so much for your time. And I'd love to have any feedback from you. And of course, if you know any pet parent uh, who has been which, whose pet, pet has been diagnosed with diabetes, do let them know about this app. Wow. I keep saying, well, yeah, it's, I, I sound like a broken record, um, but um, yeah, that was amazing. And I, I love the, the impact that all these projects are having, um, the social impact, especially. Um, so <laughs> DJ, um, um, yeah, so thanks so much, Venti, for, for um, sharing that um, and your, your bubble wizardry. Um, again, uh, feedback will be on the, the Jamboard um, and I'm sure people can follow up with you on your Twitter and, and, and elsewhere. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so let's let's uh, move on to Michael Novotny uh, for our sixth, um, our sixth and penultimate uh, demo. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, all good. Uh, all, good. all right, good. Um, so uh, first of all, I'm absolutely blown away by everybody's presentations and demos and slides. It is incredible. So fantastic job, everyone. Second of all, Max, you and I are no longer friends after this, but putting me last after everybody <laughs> that because this is incredible. Um, I'm absolutely blown away. And so let me share my screen here and just wanted to, to, to talk and share my project and um, hopes that it, that it helps uh, some of y'all or other makers out there. All right, uh, let's see here. Should be sharing now. I'm gonna hit the present button and see what happens. Max, if you could give me the yeah. it's a little bit delayed on my end, but if you give me the thumbs up. Yeah, you're, you're good, Michael. Awesome. Cool. So um, I wanted to do three things really quick. I know we're short on time. Um, Max, am I the last one or is there, is there one we've more? Got, uh, we've got Tony after you. So um, okay, yeah, just, I'll be quick. Um, great. Awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, but no rush, um, no rush. Sure. Uh, so three things I wanted to do was just kind of give a little background into, uh, hey, what problem am I solving? What am I trying to do? Uh, a little bit of a story behind it, give a quick demo. And then, of course, um, I uh, would be amiss if I did not share what I learned during my process. So I think um, for the folks who do know me, 
Uh, that's something that I, that I love to do is share in the open uh, projects uh, that I'm learning. Uh, before this product, um, one of the things that I did was um, I would do teardowns of no-code projects. Um, how are they built? What are the things I learned? What are the tools they used? People used to make them, and I love highlighting makers. I'll be picking that back up once I get done with this project um, and hoping to be done with it soon. Um, so one thing I want to start off with, a little bit of inspiration. Uh, you know, I think in life we have all these aha moments. One of them for me was actually a quote from you know, none other Steve Jobs, which is, just realizing that everything around you is, is made up of, of, of things that people created. Um, and I believe that um, people that are no smarter than you and I, and, you know, um, I believe that we can change it. We can influence it just like Steve Jobs says here. Um, and what's amazing and what I loved about Marcus's presentation is just showing like just what an incredible time we have to build. And when I start to see just uh, projects like Vensi or, or, or anybody uh, out there like uh, I know Andrew Vernon and a few other uh, folks who are focused on a niche product or problem, they can solve their own problems by building it. Uh, it's just an incredible time of empowerment and I'm absolutely delighted and blown away by seeing that from everybody. Um, and so uh, about me, um, just to keep it simple, I just love to help people uh, kind of uh, get what's out in your brain into the world. Uh, by day, I'm a, I'm a digital product manager um, at a major sports league here in the U.S., um, but what my passion is is making things, and um, I've, I've you know shipped a bunch of uh, no-code products. Um, but um, the only reason why I feel like I've had success—not the only reason, but a major reason why—is because of, of my learnings from other people and everyone on this call, and, and, and um, including the, the folks that have presented. And so, um, one of the things that I found interesting, though, and this goes in kind of the story of like, hey, why why am I creating this product called the Lean Side Project? Uh, which I built in Bubble, is uh, one of the first no-code products I built was called Get Stacked. Um, and what it does is basically takes in um, just some, some high-level um, questions and, and surveys you on your product idea, um, the complexity that you want to build, uh, that you have in mind, um, and um, a few other measurables. And I spit back in an automated form, um, built with no-code, a recommendation of what tools to use for that. And, and that's based off of not just my opinion, but also all of the products that, that I've analyzed in, in the database that I've been collecting um, uh, for about almost a little over a year, almost a year and a half now. And so I've had a, um, you know 3,000 folks use this, and that's given me the opportunity to talk to, the, to, to everyone who's using it. And to my surprise, 70% of the folks who've tried it have not made anything, have not shipped anything uh, successfully. So that's, that was, you know, for me, just a kind of an aha moment. Um, I was like, wow, that's, that's really a lot more than I thought um, who, who are using this and just people in general. Um, and at the same time, you know, I have access and the opportunity to build a, a really amazing network. I feel so blessed uh, to be able to talk with incredible makers, all of which are on this call, like KP, Janelle, Max, Dan Perry. I mean, the, the list can go on. And I get to pick their brains. I'm like, hey, what are the things that you did or learned from your, uh, from your products? And so I thought, well, what if I just, you know, try to create something that, um, uh, and based off of my experience in making that really brought down the barrier for making and launching something. And so um, I want to hop into the product and side project real quick. Um, can you still see my screen, Max? Yeah, you were good. Awesome. That, and I might ask that from time to time. I have a little bit of paranoia and PTSD from the last presentation that I did. Um, on, on deck, um, but uh, so please, you know, flag me uh, if, if something goes awry. Um, so um, what I wanted to do today was just give a quick demo and then wrap up here of the things that I learned. This is built in Bubble and you can see um, it's just a, a basic landing page. Um, at the bottom um, of the page is, is obviously a pre-order button. Um, and then uh, below that, um, I have a, you know, a shout out wall. Um, so uh, once you go inside the app, um, the basic uh, premise of, of why I've decided to build this the way it is, is because uh, whenever you're, you're building something, you essentially, what I've, what I've experienced is you need three things at a very high level. You need time, you need an audience, and you need to build an actual product or service. And so um, as I was going through and, and talking with makers and, and understanding their pain points of like, hey, why weren't they actually shipping? 
um, I felt like the best way to help to help people do this was to come this through two ways. One is um, to provide a go at your pace type of uh, learning uh, course, um, which is in the form of a book and a guide. Um, and the second way is you learn by doing. I'm a big advocate of just shipping the thing. And so the way I've designed this in Bubble um, is uh, basically as you've um, as you jump into the product, um, each um, chapter is built in the, the next best thing that you should do. And so at the very beginning, uh, it's, it's your establishing, you're establishing your, your, your why for what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to do. It's understanding uh, the problem that you're, set, you're, you're um, setting out to do. And then within that, uh, the part that I haven't built yet is there'll be, um, for each of my recommendation will be the, the actionable workbook part of the app where you'll be able to answer and based off of the questions that I ask, instead of a static document and filling it out, you'll have um, uh, an inbox here to write out your answers. And that will be um, printed out into your, and to save on your profile within the app. Um, is sort of like a lean canvas type of, um, 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 type of output. Um, it'll be a little bit different, but the, the whole uh, point and emphasis that we're trying to do is uh, it can be really overwhelming uh, as I've talked to makers to create something. So what I've tried to do is build this in a way where um, you're only given what you need to know and can focus in on that and learn, okay, what is the first thing that I need to do with establishing, you know, building something? It's actually not. It's actually building an audience. Um, and so I help with uh, makers who have maybe never been able to make anything before, try to think about um, what are all the best, best things I need to do when I need to do them um, in hopes of uh, creating their, their product and, and increasing the odds of success. Um, the second or the third part, um, what I did here, and this was a lesson for me, was um, I have a database of 150 no-code products here. Um, and once it loads, it's a little slow because, you know, Zoom and plus my computer is, is never a, a good recipe for speed. Um, hopefully you can see this has come through on your end, but essentially I've been collecting, um, you know, thousands of data points on what are all the tools used, uh, what's the, the time used to build maker insights, um, as well as I've written 115,000 words in um, breaking down each product and I've categorized those. So you can really hopefully, you know, the idea of this is taking, imagine taking all the insights from hundreds of makers and downloading them uh, for when you need them for, for the project that you're building. Um, so I really wanna get through, I know we're short on time, um, just uh, a couple of the things that I've uh, learned through this. Um, there are no shortcuts in life, but I do believe there are when you're building with no code. Um, and so I wanted to go through a couple of those uh, with you briefly. One is um, using a template. So I knew exactly what are the elements I broke down? What are the things of my app that I wanted to do? I needed to have passwordless login. I needed to have the ability to take payment. Um, I was able to find for $100 a template uh, that I could repurpose and that saved me a ton of time. So everything that you saw right there, especially the landing page, I didn't have to build out. The second thing is I used a plugin uh, called Billflow for billing. Um, it used to be called ServiceBot. They changed, they changed the name to Billflow. This was absolutely a cheat code. Instead of trying to build out a Stripe um, transaction using the Stripe plugin with, with Bubble, which I turned out to be just way more than I wanted to do. I literally wanted just to, to drag and drop and some embed code into my app. I was able to do that uh, with Billflow. Um, a couple other things. Um, and just heads up, the things that I learned is when, and kind of freaked out when I was going live with it, is it takes a little bit of time for domain uh, propagation. Um, I used this uh, build UI component library called Open, Open Build. I was actually disappointed with this, $20 a month. I canceled it within, within a month because I was hoping to, again, leverage components pre-built, drag and drop, put them in, um, but they weren't mobile responsive. And so the template that I bought was mobile responsive, but using open build to help build with bubble. I was, I was disappointed with it. I'm looking for a better way uh, to create, to get some good UI components, kind of like how you can get them pre-built in Figma. Um, so if anyone has any out there, you know, please let me know. Uh, your database um, in, in development is not linked to your database in prod. So immediately uh, I freaked out when I went live because it did, my app didn't work. <laughs> and that's because my database, I had not copied it over to uh, the live database. Uh, a couple more slides here. The meta tags for your social posts. Um, I thought this was straightforward. It's not. Um, basically, there's an extra step you need to go into it uh, to, to, uh, within the page to um, get that correctly set up. 
Let me know if you're having problems with that. I'll be happy to troubleshoot. Um, lastly, um, I did a test of SendGrid versus Bubble uh, built-in email service provider and the Bubble plugin outperformed SendGrid. So I was kind of blown away by this. What I do for my app is I send a passwordless login, sends, sends them an email, sends users an email um, where they can click the link just like this and get logged in the app. I like this because it helps what I believe in my opinion is provides a little bit more security around my IP. Instead of uh, just passing around an Airtable base link, uh, you have to use your email to get access to it, which people will probably be a little bit less likely to, to um, share their email. Um, so I also want to give thanks to my network, Leverager Network. Um, I always tried to do things, fix things myself, but if I got stuck, immediately went to uh, Kieran Ball, Pierre, uh, Tony, uh, who I have to give a shout out and was immensely helpful. Uh, lastly, but not least, please reach out to me on Twitter. I, um, I try to uh, respond to everybody and, and help everyone I can. And um, I, I, the only reason why I've been able to do the things I've done is because I've learned from the community. So I just want to say thank you. And um, not as flashy as, as all these amazing presentations, but for basic bubble app, I hope this helps. Good time. Um, yeah, you're, I've, I've, I've got, uh, the lean, lean side, uh, lean, lean side project and it's just a gold mine. Um, so highly recommend, um, anyone, if you need, uh, data points and tools and stuff, just get it. Um, so, uh, last, but certainly not least we have, sorry, uh, Tony, I tried to go fast. <laughs> yeah um we have we have uh we have tony so um yeah uh love to see it tony uh, all yours okay so hopefully you're looking at two of my faces one talking one yes on my good. portfolio page all good. All good. uh this is me uh this is my uh bad unicorn inspired portfolio page uh you can find me there if you want to reach out um here's the basic concept here's the landing page I've always wanted someone to come and just do my laundry and I haven't been able to find that service yet. So uh, I've decided to build it. Uh, so we're not talking about building the actual service here today. We're just going to talk about the no code aspect of it. Um, so basic concept is, hey, you put your laundry in a laundry bag or, you know, whatever vessel, pillowcase, whatever you want to use. Someone, you order it on the app, someone comes and picks it up and then once you're once it's once you're alerted that it's ready to be uh, delivered back to you, you schedule the drop off for it. Uh, oh my, the Zoom thing's getting in the way. Okay, so I built it all in Glide. Um, I'll go to this tab to kind of go over the. So these are a bunch of pickups that I've started, but it's basically like, hey, you start a profile, you put your address in, and when you want to go to uh, have your laundry done, you click that you want to start a new pickup. You can either have it be at your primary address or your current location. So if you go like with the current location, I don't know if it's going to find me. Yeah. Let's see. And it's turned off and what do you call it? So it's not going to find it. So we just go with primary address and, and let it, uh, let it work from there. Cause I even have that as a note because sometimes when you're on a computer, it doesn't really, uh, like to find the, the, the thing. And then you schedule a pickup window. This is the only part that gets a little janky because someone might actually accidentally schedule this in the past. Right now we're just doing nine o'clock and 10 o'clock is our pickup window and three and four is also a pickup window slash drop off. You know, you can get it for the next day. So I'll, I'll set this for nine and 10 in the morning and then schedule it for tomorrow. Click, there we go. So that would start uh, the pickup and then you just click uh, submit. And these are all old ones because I haven't put them through because to actually buy it, I won't go through the whole Stripe uh, process. I, and you just come here. The real key is like you just put the weight of the bag in. Uh, I have under 10 pounds of laundry, I think. And that brings up the buy button. Buy button in Glide is fairly limited. So we've kind of got to work around. You can't like build an order per se and have like, you can have a shopping cart, but you can't build like an order form for like a service. That's not something that Glide currently allows. Uh, so that's why we, this basically, basically the product list is just the list of weights that we have used. Um, for people's security, uh, you wanna be able to, I want people to be able to, not security necessarily, but peace of mind about, hey, that if I give you 10 shirts, they are gonna come back. Uh, you know, 
you can just be able to put in like everything that's there. Usually I do laundry when underwear runs out. So I had seven days, you know, just put that in. That's, that's usually my inspiration. Uh, is if you scroll, it's gonna move that. And you can click done. So that's what's in my bag. And that'll show up uh, down here. And then you just click schedule pickup. It's gonna, you put in your credit card information and place your order and I show up and for now, because it's just me. Ideally, you want to build out like the platform where it becomes an Uber or an Instacart for laundry, and you've got different people uh, doing it, uh, or and then also tying in actual locations that already do this. Uh, once I show that I have a, a customer list uh, for that, there's a back end to the app that's not say, so on this one. If I cancel this out and I go back, blah blah blah. You see, there's nothing here. This is like a normal user. I have like an admin one that will show me an order map and help me. Uh, this is actually gonna show, my friend tested it from Maryland, so it shows up way down here, but this is my, this is the order map, shows all that. And also for order processing, which, cause I then have to tell people like, hey, yeah, you come pick up, this is when we did all the testing. Hey, schedule your delivery back to yourself, but that's only visible you know, you just make an admin section within uh, Glide. Um, I'm kind of unfamiliar with the current layout of Glide because they just made a recent change and I haven't really built in it since they did that, but it seems pretty clean. Uh, but yeah, we're just taking, this is our this is our MVP and it's kind of just local to Wilkes-Barre. You can download the app. It's going to tell you like, hey, you're too far away uh, when you put in your address for me to come pick it up. But uh, hopefully in the future, I'm sending somebody uh, to your house to do your laundry for you. Um, that's all I've got. I don't know if I got under five minutes though. No, you did. I think you did. Um, that was amazing. I wish I had that, um, at uni. Um, I think that would have been amazing. Um, yeah. and it's, um, yeah, shown really like the power of, of glide. Um, and that is without even like the new interface and stuff they've done with it. So yeah, exciting tool. Um, Cool. That is um, us done for for the demos. Thank you, everyone, for for um, for for attentively watching and sharing your thoughts and feedback and stuff on the Jamboard. Um, I just want to wrap up with a couple of um, closing thoughts, um, next steps, and stuff uh, to close this thing out. Um, and and then uh, yeah, you can uh, you guys can get get on with your day. But um, essentially, um, we're going to be um, adding each of these projects um, to our website um, is like a, a post follow up um, uh, thing so you can check out the products yourself or um, add some additional feedback. Um, we'll be uploading this recording uh, ASAP. Um, so that will be on Twitter, wherever. Um, and the next demo date will be on the 3rd of June. Um, so save the date in your diaries and it'll be good, of, of course, to, to see you guys there. Um, if you'd like to uh, learn to know code and soft launch your own um, projects um, at our next demo day, then um, uh, feel free to join the community. Um, yeah, the website, you, you'll be able to find that um, somewhere. But um, also we have a beginner's course. So if you're just um, getting started, our course is coming out on Wednesday. Um, so please, um, if you're into that and you need to get a start, then it's 50% off until Wednesday. So um, please check that out. And I'll just drop that in the chat. Um, and then lastly, uh, sorry guys, um, I would love to um, give a massive shout out to Builder and Softer who have both sponsored this event and made it possible. Um, so thank you so much guys. Um, both web app builders, uh, extremely powerful and I'd highly recommend checking them out. Um, and if you've enjoyed today's event, please could you give just any love on social media for the projects that have been shown and of course 100 days of no code, that would be hugely appreciated. Um, and any feedback as well, um, so I can tweak things and make this event better next time. Um, so yeah, I think that is it from me um, and it's a wrap. So um, yeah, I'd just like to say again, thanks everyone for coming, the demoers, um, and uh janelle for, for for a wonderful keynote at the start so yeah that's me um thanks guys <laughs>
Thank you so much, Max. Yeah, great cheers, event. guys. Yeah. Thanks, well. everyone. That's awesome. the best plug yet. Great work. <laughs> cheers, guys. Bye, bye. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Great session. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye. bye.